Hi guys, it's Leah with Family Heritage Living. Um, I just wanted to put this quick front to this video that I did on because in this video I do a Q&A and I'm actually doing it without recording myself. I wanted to throw some B-roll in there, things that um, were either pertinent to the video or just some things going on around our homestead. Now, uh, disclaimer on I went back, I went way back on some of these, this B-roll video. Some of it's current, some of it's Ron working on the edition. Um, some of it's, you know, just stuff going on, but some of it is really old and you'll be able to tell because the video is totally different. It was not a 4K. Um, and also uh, the screen, the lighting is really, really bad. And the camera is really shaky because this was like, this is so old, this is back when YouTube, before, you know, everybody was using uh, stabilizers and stuff. So, um, so anyways, I just, I wanted to try this style of video, get your guys' response. Tell me if you like the Q and A uh, this way with seeing some B-roll going on of things going around on around our place, uh, in our home, outside of our home. Uh, I like to watch videos like that. I like to see what people are actually doing and not necessarily always, it's not always appropriate to hear the conversation or uh, what's being said at that time. So this seemed pretty fitting to me, but all right. Well, hope you enjoy this video. God bless. Hi guys, it's Leah with Family Heritage Living. I'm doing a video today on a q and A. I'm about a week behind, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, and it's actually not the Q and A that I thought I was going to do. I got a message from a viewer who had a lot of questions and I thought they were good questions and I really wanted to answer, but I knew that it would be better if I did it via video. Um, I read them all and I appreciate every comment and I, I do try my best to respond to each one, but some days are just really a struggle. And before I know it, days have gone by. So this one I wanted to do because she had several questions I wanted to do via video. And um, I'm gonna contact her in the message to let her know that I did answer, but I've done it this way and give her the link. Um, so one of her questions is she wanted to know how we liked our propane stove versus our wood stove. That, if you've been with our channel for any amount of time, you will know that we have used a wood cook stove year round for many years now. Um, that has not always been the most convenient thing, but it has been what we have chosen and it keeps additional fuel bills down. But one of the things that as we get older and we have to learn to adapt as we maintain our lifestyle, also my work time has increased because like I said, I spend, I do a lot of writing. Um, so I'm looking for time, ways that I can have more free time, ways that I can free up time for uh, my guys in any possible way. There's a lot of time spent with wood, get gathering wood. So sometimes the cost of something outweighs the laborious uh, time intent or the time that is involved. And in this case, uh, a wood stove was what we decided would be optimal. Now we did have had over the years on occasion used a camp propane burner. Got to be honest with you, um, it's not something I liked. It is something that we would use on the super hottest days, but it it's a two burner thing and it what didn't have a permanent place in the kitchen, which meant we had to find a place to store it and in our we don't have a storage building. You know, we, we make storage areas, but we don't have a storage building. Um, and then I would have to bring it in and set it on top of uh, some place, make sure that was all set. So I just, it wasn't convenient. And you couldn't really, I couldn't bake in it. All I could do was warm up water on it. Um, not even enough water to wash the dishes with, but I don't, complicated, long story. We decided that we wanted a propane stove to be part of the kitchen, a propane range to be part of the kitchen, not getting rid of our wood stove because we still use that all the time. In fact, I still use it daily, almost daily uh, to heat up our wash water. We put 30 gallons, um, actually, let's see. Yeah, we put 30 gallons of water on the top of our wood stove, which we've, you know, the old uh phrase heart of the home well our wood stove has always been heart of the home 
uh, it does everything. It's our, our furnace, it fuels, uh, feeds us, it warms up our water. But it just, there was enough months out of the year that the convenience of a propane stove we decided was definitely worth it. The other thing too, um, when you cook on a wood stove, especially in the oven, and depending on what type of wood fuel you've got going on, being the species, how dry it is, etc., sometimes there's a lot of maintaining the heat. And I don't always have the time to do that. Um, and when I don't have the time to do that, if I get called away, if I get preoccupied, I'm likely to lose track of the fire. And I so the turning the propane oven on is like, I mean, it, I can't tell you, it's like revolutionary to me. Um, now we've had propane ovens, gas ovens years ago, but it has been years. So this is just, it's a new thing and I'm loving it. I love our stove. Uh, we wanted something that would fit into our home. And as far as the decor, we also wanted something that we knew uh, we didn't have any electronics inside since we don't have uh, the ele electrical. We wanted something that we would ha knew that we would have no desire within us to replace if something neater came out or something um, more, I don't know, likable came out. So we found this old stove. It is almost 100 years old and she's still going strong. Um, there was some who had it before the people that a couple of people back who had it before redid all of the piping and put regulators in it was actually a natural gas stove so when we got it ron got with a an old stove repairman there and there are few and far between that know how it's like working on an old car you know everything's computerized but he still knew his stuff from back in the day and was able to help Ron to regulate and, you know, convert the um, orifices over to uh, the right pressure for the propane. So, yes, absolutely love it. Would highly recommend this as an option for people who use wood all the time um, for convenience. And... It just it, it's it just does so many things for us, but we, again we our wood stove is still the primary thing that is that is my go to stove, um, and it does save so much. You know, I mean, we do end up spending on propane monthly, but it's it's tit for tat right now. Um, fuel cost. Versus if we buy our wood, which on occasion we supplement, or the time that they have to go out and harvest the wood. So, uh, it again, tit for tat. Uh, she also wondered about how Ron's health has been. Um, and again, if you've watched our channel for any length of time, you know that Ron's got back problems. He's had two back surgeries, the last one being in 2004, multiple uh, times where his back has gone out and he's been unable to do anything. But with that said, um, God's been really good to us and he, Ron is able to function. He's a chronic back patient, which means he, he chronically has pain, but, uh, the good Lord has taught us how to manage his pain so that he can function as a human being. We know that back pain can be, um, debilitating. And so we feel very blessed that he he is able to function at his age in the work that he does, um, especially since his back problem started in his 20s. And so he's his back has been deteriorating for a long time. Uh, as far as his surgeries, knowing what he knows now, he would never have had the surgeries because he, we actually think the surgeries for his situation, and it, everybody's different, please hear me, but for his situation, they made manners worse with scar tissue and, and such things. Um, but we're, you know, we, we do think about the future. Um, he's in his 60s. I'm in my 50s. And uh, we do consider certain things of, 
of how things would have to change. And so we, we do work that way. Now, that doesn't mean we have to um, move. It doesn't mean we have to, you know, totally change our life. But we've been living this life since 2016. Uh, and he was already in his 50s, you know, when we moved up here. And I was in my 40s, it, and it was, it's been a real experience um sometimes good sometimes bad and even though when we stop and we think about it even the bad have been things that can be a positive experience for us because we can learn from those bad things and that's what we've done um we did actually <laughs> uh, for years be and, and a lot of it was because of finances we couldn't afford it i mean it's crazy to think that um People struggle so much, but but the reality is people do struggle. And we couldn't even afford a snowblower for the longest time up here, a place where it gets over 300 inches annually of snow throughout the year. Um, he shoveled this by hand. I know we've got two young boys or two young men, uh, and then the younger boys are coming up. And so you think, well, they did the work. But really, he has done the majority of the back work in things like this and not i'm not saying the guys haven't done their fair share because they absolutely have but a lot of this is he would you know i had no doubt that if it was just him and i he would continue to do it but so we got a snowblower last year and this past winter we were already right he was going to tackle that wood we had the one of the least snowiest winters on record up here it was funny but so so those are things that we've done um and we have other things in plan but they all require money and in the meantime while we wait for the opportunities to present themselves we just deal with it uh and you know we thank the good lord every day for our for the health that he's given us and work our best to keep ourselves um as healthy as we can in our situation now she wanted to know if we would be doing an update on our home tour and anytime soon. I was kind of holding off, to be honest with you. I, I Yes, we intend to do a home tour. And in my mind, I was actually wanting to hold off until we got the original part of the cabin a little more situated. Um, because it's kind of like when we got the, the porch enclosed and moved the kitchen to the porch and open, you know, opened it up, it's kind of like it was like we've been in this moving in mode. Uh, we've been moving furniture around, trying to decide if we're going to put new walls up and where we're doing it. And then life happens and, you know, we have to decide we only have enough material for, you know, one wall and not two walls. And we have to wait till we get more material to put the door in where we want to move it to. And, it, you know, it's just one of those things that we've had to swing with um but with that said so i'm not really in a place where i want to do an entire main floor cabin tour but i am and i really wanted to wait to do the kitchen cabin tour until we got the cook stove moved into the kitchen because that's still in the original part of the cabin and the reason we were waiting is because we had to uh, order a piece for the chimney because it's at a different angle now and so we had to wait for the um, money to come in for that. And then once we finally got that, which we've had for a week or so, the rain has been unrelenting. And then um, RJ and Josiah have been needing Ron's help at their place. So it's we're working through that. But I'm going to go ahead, actually, and do a cabin or a tour of the new kitchen, even though the stove isn't moved in. So that should be up probably in the next within the next five days i think i'm going to try to have it up by the first of the week um she wanted to know she asked about if rj was still doing his spoon shop and he's actually had, had that on hold uh as he hasn't been making more any more spoons lately he he had a supply made up and then he got into carving and he's working on carvings but she wanted to know about a spatula i i will show you my spatula i absolutely love it in fact he gave it to me for a tester or mama try this i want to see what you think of it and 
I I fell in love with it. I use it for like everything. Um, for flipping and for stirring, it's just it's the perfect uh, angle and for it all. So and I said, yeah, obviously, you know, son, you're not getting this one back. <laughs> but um, I'll I'll show that in a video for you. Okay, and the other question she had was, any recommendations for homeschooling? Um, you know, our homeschooling journey has been going on for a long time. And one of the things as a family that we have found is for the best learning is learning together, involving them in everything and everything that we can. Obviously, everything isn't always like 100%, but they're part of, they're part of the family. Um, they're part of time together. We make sure that we're always available for discussions. Um, we talk about things that children learn in classroom. We talk about conversationally. Okay, so politics, um, history, uh, geography, these things that are done within a time structure in our in, in a schoolroom in our home are done on a daily basis. Uh, we have books uh, all over, and we, when we watch things, we try to pick things, especially uh, documentaries that that can be intertwined into our conversations. Um, they can be intertwined through the subjects of school. Now, a lot of people might say, "Well, that's not very structured." Well, in reality, that's actually very structured because. Our first two are proof that learning this way, um, learning isn't done when you walk out of that schoolroom. Learning is done around the clock. And when we learn that way, we learn also that we can learn anything we want. We are not limited to what our professors tell us, our teachers tell us, um, what the government tells us, what the school tells us, that we are able to learn. We can learn anything. And we can self-teach ourselves anything. Now that, of course, there's limits on, uh, are you a, a certified professional? Obviously, you have to go to school to um, get courses that certify you in those things. But my point is, is, as people, too often I've met people that they don't educate themselves because they weren't learned, they really weren't taught how to educate themselves. And then they live, have shallow perspectives. Um, they don't know how to think outside of the box. And that scares me because we have a society that doesn't know how to think outside of the box. And we can see the condition our society is in. So our learning has been like of the utmost importance in our family as a basis of life. Right. Um, that our learning isn't dependent on someone else. Our learning is dependent because we're created to learn. God created us as human beings to learn. And we need to understand the privilege of learning, that it is a privilege and it is only limited by how the, the limits that we put on it. Now, with that said, um, I really like Charlotte Mason's, and, and it, it, that really actually gears in to what I just said um, as far as, how to incorporate real learning into real life um, and to, to create children that have the desire for deep learning about real things and how they, they can be applied to daily life. So we've tried a lot of different curriculum books. Um, I'm not a big one into workbooks, although they're, they do have their place. Um, and I've been fortunate, we've been fortunate as a family that we have a very inviting environment for learning. And we have a lot of opportunities. The other thing, too, I think that's important that people overlook, you know, we can teach anything in a book. And, and kids can be taught that, that in public schools, but what they're not taught too often or often enough is character and what makes um, a person a person of character. And I think that that's 
that's way underrated because that ties into our book learning um, and how we perceive ourselves as people and what we have to contribute. And when we realize we have things to contribute as people, we desire to be more learned, more educated, so that we can share that with other people. Um, uh, yeah. and, it, and also in cycles of life and in areas of life, sometimes, you know, we've had to, to change our format of what we were doing. And I had to learn that that was okay to do that, that she, and Oh, I missed a question here. Let's see. She says, now that the kids are growing up, let's see, we did a video before on pour over baths and the wash tub. Okay. So I'm thinking you meant when they were younger and we had a round circular bath. Okay. So now when we always have had, actually, since we've been here, we've had a solar shower, five gallon bucket, um, we call it a solar shower, but actually we heat the water up and we used to, we used to let it sit out in the sun, but um, it, our warm days and stuff up here don't last that long. So we just heat the water up and then put it in the the bucket and take a shower in the shower house. Um, a lot of sponge baths and with having added on to our cabin, we do intend to put a solar or a, a shower with a five gallon bucket um, uh, set up in the bathroom. So it will be the gray water just like outside, but it will just be better in inclement weather. And, um, you know, a five gallon bucket usually gets two people a shower. You know, maybe not like a... a, a for me, it wouldn't work because I'd have to wash my hair. But if I wash my hair beforehand in a tub and or a pan, and then I take a shower, then yes, you can get two showers out of a five-gallon bucket. So um, in the summer, it's it's easy except for fighting the bugs. In the spring, warmer spring, beginning of fall, it's okay outside. You can get as many showers as you want. But it's the cold weather that the... Um, a lot of foot baths, a lot of sponge baths. Uh, we do have our old tub, but it takes a lot of water to fill that. So what I'm wanting to get, and I, this is a ways off because I've looked at the price and they're expensive. We've got a portable one, a collapsible one. I don't really care for it. Um, but I believe they're a Japanese bath is what they're called. They're very tall, so you can soak from like the collarbone down with minimal water and just have your legs crossed versus like our tubs where they're long and so you go through a lot of water. But that is my that is my plan because I like a bath. I like to soak. Um, and I like I like the detoxification that comes cleaning out your your glands and stuff. Um, I just I just like a bath. And it's difficult here in a dry cabin. So which means for those that aren't um, aware of what that means, term dry cabin means. It's a place you don't have water on your property. We're a remote cabin in our county uh, because we don't have a well and we're not hooked up to the grid. Uh, so we have to haul our water in, in buckets. We can't have a pressurized system on our property. Now, at some point in time, I learned that in our county, uh, and I think this hadn't always been this way, we can have a hand well, but those are really expensive. And so it's one of those things that, you know, you put in the prayer book and you say, Lord, if this, if this is your will, open doors um, and we'll get her done. So someday the Lord willing, but in the meantime, we haul our water in. So we are very in tune to our water usage. We would be what's considered very, very uh, green in that area. Um, we are not wasters of water because we have to count the cost for every bucket that's hauled in. And it's a lot of work. We have to go to the well to get it and haul it back here, heat it up. Um, it's just, we're very conscientious of the amount we use. So, all right. Well, with that being said, I'm going to, this video has probably gotten way longer than I wanted it to. 
I'm going to sign off for now and we will do another q and I do have more questions. I just wanted to do this one in a timely fashion because it was in an actual comment. I did not want our listener to think that we were ignoring her, her questions. So, all right, until next time, you guys have a great week and we will talk soon. God bless.